Hello everyone, welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I continue my construction of the International Space Station. But first I wanted to broach some subjects raised in the comments. Uh, first of all, we are drifting off of the pad because the SRBs are not strong enough. Uh, they do not have as much thrust as their real-life counterparts. In real life, the boosters have about five to six times the thrust of the shuttle main engines. Here, they are about three times the thrust of the main engines. We are not going to throttle down the main engines uh, during launch because our thrust weight ratio with the weaker boosters is only 1.25, whereas the real shuttle had 1.5. So the weaker boosters are clearly hurting us here in both the drift and the fact that we are not getting off the pad as uh, vigorously as we ought to. Uh, I'm going to leave that be uh, because I don't want to get off the pad sluggishly, more sluggishly than we already are. So we will drift. Uh, the other topic was, well, there are many other topics. One other topic was that the gimbaling was all over the place. That's because I can't use my joystick with the game. It'd be a lot smoother if I wasn't trying to use w, w A, S, and D in order to control the rocket, and Q and E for that matter. Uh, if we reduce the gimbal range on the engines, uh, they will not be able to point through the combined center of mass of the stack properly. And some people talked about having their shuttle flipping all over the place. Well, that might be because your main engines are not pointed through the center mass properly. Uh, if that, if you didn't put the mob propellant tanks that we've clipped into the nose cone, if you saw the construction of my shuttle, uh, we actually have mob propellant tanks that we're not using sitting up there. And the reason for that is to make sure the center mass is as high as possible when the external tank drains. Otherwise, it'll move very close to the shuttle. And then if it ends up, uh, see, the midpoint for the external tank is about here. And then the midpoint for the shuttle's uh, center mass is about here. So it'll probably end up somewhere around here. And when it's there, the shuttle main engines would have a lot of trouble pointing to it, especially if they don't have the full 10.5 degree gimbal range. So anyway, we're going to leave the gimbal range as it is to make sure the shuttle stays balanced. Uh, somebody suggested that the wings were breaking off because of stress. It's not because of stress. Uh, if it was because of stress, it would happen in the atmosphere, not after ages in orbit trying to rendezvous with the space station and only when we separate the payload. It's when we separate the payload and when we've time warped with the payload to the station, trying to move it over there, that the shuttle wings separate. And we also saw that with an unstressed part, the landing legs on the recoverable launcher that we used for the rescue uh, two videos ago, there the leg wasn't deployed, so it couldn't have received any stress, and yet one of them flew off. Uh, uh, they were part of a radially attached set of four, just like these are a radially attached set of two, and that one landing leg flew off for no apparent reason, but only after we decoupled the payload. So, yeah. Uh, it is something to do with decoupling the payload, and that is my operant theory. However, the suggestion to add struts might not be a bad one. Uh, it's just the diagnosis of why the strut might work that is potentially wrong. So we've got struts. I've only put one strut per wing, and that's because I don't want to increase the part count too much. And so we've got that, and we'll try that out. But I'm not. I'm still not going to do anything that I think will caused the problem. So we're still going to park away from the station and also not time warp with the payload. So those are the mitigating things that I would like to put in place. I swear that the Kraken actually casts a shadow on us <laughs> as we uh, do things in the VAB here. So they're in the Mark III cockpit. We're launching the Quest airlock to the Inter International Space Station with STS-104. That is our space station. I time warped in the tracking station to line up already, so that's okay. If it turns out that the space station is more stationary than it ought to be, we will correct that after launch. So, yes, it looks like we're good to go. Space bar. And skip countdown. Ignition and launch. So, this is, this is how it's going to be. <laughs> Sorry about that. It doesn't seem like the boosters have gimbling, or do they? Maybe just a little bit. Probably not enough. The real-life boosters have seven degrees of gimbling, and they handle most of the stuff during launch until they separate. So somebody talked about save file corruption in the comments, and let me make this perfectly clear. I'm not going to touch the save files at all, and that's because I want consistent results. 
and if we have bugs, you know, that they are very solidly reportable bugs and that sort of thing. So no mods, no save file touching, none of that. And if, if things get bad enough that I can't proceed, then that's how it is. This is an experiment, like everything on my channel. And in this case, this is an experiment to see whether this can be done in this version of Kerbal Space Program. And so, if it ends up being that I decide that I can't proceed with constructing the International Space Station anymore, uh, then that's how it's just going to be. Uh, that will be the conclusion, uh, that we could just couldn't do it in this version, and we'll wait till the next version and try again. I'm just trying to get it on the right heading. <laughs> I've been trying to nudge it over there, but I guess we'll have to wait on that. Booster set. Uh, think it was clean. At some point, the atmosphere will let me point further south so that we can get back on our proper track, but right now it's not. Okay, we've settled down and we can handle our corrections. Another factor as far as the throttling of the main engines is concerned and the timing of everything, especially if you're making your own shuttle, is you have to make sure that when the sh uh, boosters separate, the external tank doesn't have too much mass left. The whole thing has to still have a thrust weight ratio of 1. The shuttle, the real shuttle, ends up with a thrust weight ratio of 1 when the boosters separate as well. Yeah, another reason I know that the wing issue is not because of stress is because, well, when we dodge the issue, even though we've done a full launch as normal and we managed to do re-entry with the wings, they don't snap off when we're doing re-entry either, where they're experiencing much more stress. Okay, correction is looking good so far. Shuttle is looking good so far. We do have the rest of the Kerbals down here. I don't know why it's prioritized the other cabin up there, but... Okay, I think we'll cut it there. Okay, go for external tank separation. Let's turn off the engines first. Okay, and avoidance maneuver. Uh, somebody mentioned the little thing for solar panels here. I'm, I'm used to those buttons being a series of different things. I knew brakes, slides, uh, gear, and abort, but I just didn't register that solar panel was one of them now. Of course, we're all familiar with those uh, particular action groups, but in general, I don't really want all the solar panels on something to pop out at the same time. Uh, it's complicated, because on a lot of vehicles that I'll be making, some of the solar panels be tucked into a fairing, and then others might be outside, so I don't really want them all coming out simultaneously, but uh, it's good to know. I'll keep that in mind. I thought about sending up tugs with this, and then using the tugs to place the next payload, which was the S0 truss, and then using it for subsequent payloads and just having uh, all the payloads moved by... Oh, did we not activate those? Okay, um, just move everything with tugs so they don't have to have controllers and RCS all on their own. But it occurred to me that that would involve a whole lot of docking and undocking, and that has been a problem, especially with the space station. Uh, so we're going to avoid those kinds of frequent dockings and undockings and just have controllers on everything, I believe is the safest course of action at this point. Okay, the station is just a bit ahead, and the station's moving. Good, we don't have to go to the tracking station to remind it. So all is well, and we are catching up with it. The external tank is on a proper disposal course. Okay, that's close enough. I actually don't want to get it to 0, 0.0. Uh, I've been a little bit superstitious about that. Okay, that's certainly probably closer than I want. Alright. Okay, we just hit some extra lag. Let me see what the distance to the target is right now. It doesn't look like I can get a distance reading. It definitely added some extra lag right there. We'll just proceed, but whatever that gap is, 
We don't get the distance to target here. But that gap is enough to start creating extra lag. Okay, well, that gap is definitely more than 14 kilometers away. Okay, unfortunately we are going to be in the dark when we release the payload, but it is where we end up getting it. Or maybe we'll have some daylight. We're stopping right here. Put plenty of tanks on the quest airlock because, after all, it seems like mob propellant randomly disappears half the time. Okay, well, save time. Undock. We still seem to be in control of the shuttle. Avoidance. Wing is still intact. And we are controlling the payload. We'll have to dock with this side. Oh, for some reason it doesn't have all the mod propellant. I thought I had transferred all of it. Maybe I was too hasty. We will move towards it quite quickly because I'm not time warping here. So, next launch would have been Piers, but since Piers is no longer with the station, we're going to skip that for now and go on to the S0 truss. We've also skipped ESP-1, which was the external stowage platform, and Canada Arm 2 because we don't have robotics. So, those are things we have skipped in the construction. I really hate the icon covering the station. <laughs> that kills the mood. It looks so much better without the icon covering the station right now. I don't even care about the Combined 7 so much. Yeah, I tried renaming it. I tried renaming it while clicking the little star thing. Nothing works as far as renaming it. I believe this is the starboard side. Okay, lining up. I guess I'll have the window facing the forward side instead. And now we're in the dark. I should remember to put lights on the S0 truss. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, or whether lights are gonna cause more rendering problems. But I also need to change the settings so that docking isn't so easy. Not that it matters too much. It's two to three seconds real time for each second in game right now. Yep, regardless of the ease of docking, we are trying to do it very properly here. Oh, okay, we have docked. No reverting, please. Alright, quest airlock is on. I will save. We are we have directly switched back to a shuttle. Let us do a control test. Our wings appear to be attached. The target is not making any sense, but what we've discovered is that it's actually no longer targeting the space station at all, and we just have that weird target glitch. So we're going to turn retrograde to uh, retrograde orbit to pull ourselves down to a lower orbit, but we seem good to go. So disaster mitigation techniques may have worked this time. Now trying to figure out how to re-enter so that we can get back to the KSC has been somewhat difficult. The shuttle gets a lot of drag. It's tough to manage its landing right at the end, which is appropriate. It's, it's acting a lot like the shuttle. The shuttle has very little leeway to decide where to go once it's below like 15 kilometers. Unfortunately, unlike the shuttle, we don't seem to have much cross range at all. Okay, I'm pretty sure we're a safe distance away from the station now. Time warping. Okay, we are in a standby orbit. Uh, I probably should burn off some more propellant. One of our problems is that our retro burn location is always in the dark, so we don't have any landmarks to go by in order to judge when to do it. I'm just trying to do by angles. Anyway, we're definitely not lined up with the KSC right now. It'd also be helpful if I had my surface coordinates, which we do not have right now as far as I can tell. 
Okay, we're probably going to be retro burning at a higher height than normal, 108 kilometers instead of 100, and that's because of the way I retro burned in order to get rid of the fuel, the extra fuel that we had. I'm gonna try and orient this properly and get a protractor to the screen. I think our apoapsis is about, it seems to be about 135 degrees away from the KSC. And we'll go to 25 kilometers on the periapsis. We'll start the retro burn at apoapsis here. And we'll be holding retrograde. No correction for the fact that the OMS engines are mounted a little bit off. As far as where we're going to be in line or not, it seems by the time we get there, it's probably going to end up too far north, our path. Based on our experience last time, I definitely would rather go long than fall short. We've got too many hills on the southern end of that continent, and we've got nice beaches on the northern end, so we'll try and overshoot if necessary. Yeah, we're too far north. Uh, our impact location is looking good though. I like to have it be basically double the distance to the KSC and it's coming in now. I'll try and roll, but last time it didn't do much good either. The thing about S-turns is you have to know that you're going long way ahead of time. And right now I haven't done enough testing to determine, yes, this is going to go long or is this going to fall short. Could go either way. There's the KSC. A lot of it is just the re-entry timing because the plant rotates so quickly. We could do a slight inclination change in order to hit the KSC better. If I could curve around and come down like that, I would, but I don't think I can manage that maneuver. I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it. <laughs> I'm contemplating the KSC very strongly. Too far and this shuttle loses speed very rapidly. Yeah, we just don't have a lot of speed right now. It's gonna stall if I try and pull that too much further. I gotta try for this beach here. Closer, but still not there. Okay, ignite the engines to dump fuel. Also, that seems to trigger the music a bit. They don't have much uh, specific impulse down here, so they're not doing anything useful. And their thrust was low to begin with. It really is just dumping fuel to make us lighter. KSC is uh, 46 kilometers away, I guess. Because there's stuff there and it says 45 kilometers now. Still a fair distance away. Cut off the engines. We'll land with some stuff. Oh, there's a bump there. Oh no, there's a hill. Oh gosh. Oh, fudge. <laughs> Oh, it was looking so good too. Stupid hills. All right, well, they survived anyway. Not a clean shuttle mission as I had hoped. I was ready to break out the beer, but... Mm. All right. Now, well, recover vessel. Verify our station is still where it ought to be. When we turn to it, always... Gives me a heart attack the way the camera is. But yep, quest air lock is there. Everything seems to be in order. Let us save. Okay, here we are with STS-110 carrying the S-0 truss to the space station. We have lights on the S-0 truss. I note that the lights are full featured, which is interesting. Uh, they're the one things that seem to be full featured around here. Uh, so they have a variable light color and advanced controls and even tilting. Anyway, but with that, uh, that Delta V does not seem right, but it never seems right. So let's try it. Start and ignition. Ah, uh, we need to replace the fuel line, I think. Struts seem fine. Fuel line seems connected, but sometimes we just have to replace it. We've got a batch of bad fuel lines, apparently. 
And it still always wants to default to the runway. Okay, now we know we're ready to go because it gives me totally the wrong camera. And ignition. And launch. SDS-110 with the S-Zero truss. Now, the SEO truss isn't going to look exactly like it ought to. I tried using structural panels to make it look a little bit more like it, but uh, that didn't work out and it would be more parts anyway. So I decided to use the Mark II fuselage parts that have mop propellant in them to give it sort of the right look. It's not exactly right though. Well, it's probably a better roll than last time if you can hold it. Okay, booster set. Let's see... That one... I think it was clear. Stably proceeding... Well, okay, it's rolling now. <laughs> Thought we were stable, but... Proceeding in the direction we need to to correct the inclination. Okay, that's good enough for now. Rolling. Okay, shutting off engines, decoupling, and avoidance, avoidance, avoidance. Okay, so our S0 truss looks like this right now. It's a pretty tight fit. It was sort of meant to be. Okay, it's going to take us some time to phase because it's actually behind us, but we will wait. Uh-oh. Um, oh, that's the external tank going on a weird trajectory. Well, that happens sometimes. It's sort of related to the same bug. Because it's been decoupled from us, and we're time warping. Okay, boosting up to get our encounter. Okay, well, that is good enough for now. Okay. Rendezvousing with the target. It's five kilometers away, sort of in the sunlight there. Don't know about the effectiveness of these little lights. We'll see. Okay, that's close enough for me. Let's start slowing down here. Alright, it's a tight fit for the payload. Let's see if we can get it out safely. Okay, uh, RCS on, out it goes. So you can see the Mark II tanks sort of clipped in like that. And the serious lag here near the station. But, you know, there was a time with KSP1 where I banned the word lag from my Twitch channel. It was like a forbidden word because of how much lag we had, so, you know, I've been here. Okay, so, station looks alright, payload looks alright so far, shuttle looks alright, let's save again. We are actually docking with this docking port here. I forgot to top off all the RCS fuel here, but we've got a lot of it, so. We do not have a very strong reaction wheel in this case. It's obviously super important that this particular truss not be skewed, otherwise the entire solar array will be skewed. Well, as is hardly new to anyone, SAS's use of RCS leaves a lot to be desired. I might be wrong, but I'm guessing at this point that these lights on here aren't going to be strong enough for anything. Mainly wanting to clear the P6 truss here. I wish the little box would go on to the target that I actually target instead of the center of the station. Still on the center of the station even though I targeted the right docking port. Okay, I think our orientation is broadly speaking correct. Let's proceed. The RCS on this is balanced about the center. 
Everything about this trust ought to be balanced. But it's not acting that way. Okay, this camera is getting annoying though. Body? Maybe body's okay. Uh, okay, body's okay for now. The camera's wobbling with it though. That's not ideal. But I'm mostly focused on the nav ball, so. Come on, little junior docking ports. Okay. They did their thing. Um, the truss is a little bit tilted. But you know what? We're probably going to leave it like that. The lights are, as expected, not ideal. Uh, let's see, pitch angle. Oh, that's... Oh, okay, well, we can go negative pitch, apparently. Does that help much? Yeah, so we picked the worst lights ever <laughs> for the station. We have some lights, but they're not great. Okay. Well, we're not got time warp with this, right? Our rules, our operant rules. We'll come back to it and see it properly in daylight later on. We're back to the shuttle. We verify that the shuttle can turn without losing a wing. It can. And let's come back down. Okay, so here we are passing south of it. So we need an orbit that's slightly longer than divisible by six hours. Okay, I had boosted up again for timing reasons and we've taken a couple of days to phase and hopefully this orbit will be the one. And by my little protractor measurement we should deorbit starting right ahead of that periapsis. And the assumption is because we are lower this time, we'll be starting at 100 kilometers, that that will be good enough, though it's wiggling a lot, but that that will make the difference instead of causing us to go too far. Now, as far as the east-west component is concerned, we'll wait until we're closer to the atmosphere and then judge whether we have to make a correction before we hit the atmosphere to tilt the orbit a bit. We'll still go to 25 kilometers as we did last time. Now, 80 kilometer altitude, and I think we're close enough. I think we're close enough. I don't know. Maybe we should tilt a little bit more northerly. We should burn some fuel anyway. Okay, well, we're getting close to the atmosphere here. And we adjusted our periapsis too high. Okay, cut and forward. Will we hit the runway? Will be we will we land in one piece? That's probably the more important question. Yeah, it looks like we're pretty well lined up this time. I took my time with it. Oops. Our orbit's still a little bit long here. That distance is just a little bit too far. I'll try and do S-turns. But S-turns sort of rely on you actually being able to change your path to some extent. So, S-turning the other way. Okay, maybe that's alright. I think we've done enough. Okay, coming in. We're along the coast. The KSC should be right there. Turning into the runway is a whole other business. Well, we're right over to KSC. Now, can I make a turn into it is the question. Trying to keep my eye on it. Shuttle isn't wanting to turn that way though. Well, starting to use the engines to dump some fuel and engage the music. There's a lot of little bumps right close to the KSC though. <laughs> hmm. I'll stick closer to the beach this time. Getting inland is dangerous. 
But I don't think we're getting back to the KSC, no. Not glide as much as I can, but this thing has a lot of drag. I mean, ultimately, it just takes some experience with the aerodynamics and deciding whether you're going too long or too short. And you need to know when you should be at what speed and that sort of thing. Please let this be flat. I never... I can never see the hills very well or bumps very well until we get really, really close. I mean, obviously we see those mountains. Great! Put the space center right with mountains nearby like that. That's real handy. <laughs> I guess uh, they absorb the uh, shock waves and everything. I wish that vertical speed tape actually gave proper information. We're definitely going down, but it's just at zero. That's wrong. Oh, a little bit of a hop. See? Oh, gosh! That was a big hop. Oh, no. Now we don't have enough speed. Ah, uh, oh, there we go again. Well, as I say, any landing you can walk away from. But yeah, I mean, what's with that vertical speed indicator just staying at zero when we're going down and it's th this zero and this negative 10 and it's just not where it needs to be. I can never tell what our vertical speed actually is. But anyway, that's happened again. After I had some nice landings with the shuttle, just coming in too hard. But I mainly blame the fact that I'm not getting the information I need. So, yeah. We're close though. We're close to the runway, but I don't know. It's gotta be tough getting closer. Okay, well... The S0 truss insofar as it does not look exactly like the S0 Trust, but it is there. And it's slight, ever, ever so slightly tilted one way. But I don't think I can get it any better right now. For now, the station remains intact and we have done our missions. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.